Thank you very much. Commissar Mbuiseni and all the commissars deployed in Houting, our provincial leadership, regional leadership, our deployees in the councils, legislature, and parliament. We greet you all in the name of the economic freedom in our lifetime. And I'm happy to be part of this occasion that takes place in Gauteng because this gives Gauteng an opportunity to engage in strategic planning on how we position the EFF as the only organization that represents the working class in the country and the continent as a whole. We are here today given an opportunity to reflect on the challenges and the strength of our organization and to give guidance to our structures, both at regional level and branch level, as to what is going to constitute the program of the EFF in Houghton going forward. So we're here to discuss ideas, governance, political strategies, and the immediate objectives of the EFF in Houghton. We are here today to consolidate the struggle against imperialism and colonialism and to continue the struggle of many generations that came before us of demanding the land and the dignity of African people. We are here to continue the struggle of the 34 mine workers which were killed in Marikana. As we remember them, we ought to answer the question as to what do we do to continue the ideas of Mount Bush which wanted to ensure that the workers in the mines get proper salaries that will bring back the dignity of African people. This EFF was formed as a result of consensus reached by the working class, as a desire for our people for freedom for humanity and for prosperity. The security guards, the domestic workers, the petrol attendants, the mine workers, and all the dispossessed masses of our people reached consensus that there must be a political organization formed 10 years ago which will respond to the needs of our people. And all of that was actioned here in Houghton. The question, what is to be done, was answered here in Houghton at the women's prison, at the Shaf 17, at Uncle Tom's Hall, at Wuking, where the masses of our people gathered and said, yes, we must form an organization that will continue the struggle of those who came before us. So the celebration of 10 years of the existence of the EFF at the FNB stadium, it is not a mistake. Because Houting 
remains the home of the EFF. Gauteng <laughs> remains the only province that continues to be the biggest feeder of EFF voters. So as you sit here, you must know that you play an important role in the life of the EFF. 26 July movement inspired by Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. It's a movement that you lead today. It's a movement that you are trying to position in order to deliver socialism in our lifetime. It's a movement that will only deliver free education, quality houses for our people, proper free health care. It is the only movement that can revive the non-existing public health care in South Africa. It is only this movement that can usher in quality education and eradicate 30% as a pass mark because the EFF believes in education. And when we speak about decolonized education, we mean business. It is because we believe in education and we know what education can do. But it must not just be an education. It must be a liberating education. It must be an education that equip you to have self-love. Not an education that educates you to hate yourself and believe in white supremacy and do everything in your power to defend white supremacy. Because the education we receive today teaches us to love our whites and hate ourselves and to believe that that which does not have white will not succeed. That our success is dependent on coexistence with white people. Unwittingly saying that before the arrival of white people in our continent and in our country, we were not successful. That we only became successful once colonialism arrived in our continent. Which is not true. Comrades, the victims of gender-based violence are looking up to you to find long-lasting permanent solution to this monster called GBV. Because the current government cannot provide solution to the problem of GBV. If anything, they are at the center of promoting GBV because amongst them exist men who abuse and kill their own wives. And therefore, such men can never find solution to what makes them who they are. So society is a reflection of the kind of government we have. So our government enjoys GBV. They are at the center of it. When a woman calls and says, I'm being abused, they ask her if there is blood, if the person has got a gun, if someone has died. Call us if the situation is worse because now you are still arguing. But this woman is calling frightened behind the door. She has managed to escape and she's calling for help. And that is the only call she can make before she dies. They tell her, if there is no blood, call us after there is blood. So only the EFF can do that, can find a solution to this monster. And where will that solution come from? It's going to come from here. You have, you have the answers. Where do you get the answers from? It's because you exist amongst our people. 
Because if you do not exist amongst our people, you will never find solutions for our people. You are only going to come with an elitist solutions. You are going to come with parachuted solutions which are not grounded. And that's why when I was called that I must come and speak to the EFF at Emperor's Palace, I thought they made a mistake. I was like, Emperor's Palace. The EFF meeting at Emperor's Palace. Because I was reminded that we have had to fight and beg for venues 10 years ago. That we have had to ask pastors <laughs> eh, to accommodate us in their churches. As I was driving here, I'm reminded of those days that the EFF can have a meeting at Emperor's Parties. And I'm reminded that there was a guy here called Mampur. Mampur was at the forefront of finding us venues here in Ikuruleni at that time. And I hope that the EFF has not abandoned him because the EFF must not be a pig and swallow its own children. As we gather here to celebrate 10 years of the existence of the EFF, we must remind ourselves of where we come from and who was there with us during those difficult times. Because if we forget who we are and forget our people who made us who we are, we are going to be hijacked by opportunities of note and distort the struggle of the EFF. As I drive here to celebrate with you 10 years of the existence of the EFF, I'm reminded of Metari. And I can't go without seeing the face of Mampur Mampur as we're leading that struggle to make sure that that, that uh, stadium becomes full to capacity. So we need to answer the question as to who are we? When we speak of Johannesburg Stock Exchange, they know the EFF. Because we're there to represent the interest of our people. When we speak about the union building, when you speak about ESCOM, when you speak about the Reserve Bank, when you speak about Chamber of Mines, when you speak about the legislature that was occupied by the EFF to bring to light that the EFF should be allowed to enter that legislature with the workers' clothes. We ought to answer the question, where were you at that time? <laughs> when the SABC refused to televise the events of the EFF when we were forced to go and expose an illiterate Taudi at the SABC, <laughs> who was there? As you meet here at Emperor's Palace, you must answer the question, does the EFF have an office in Soweto, in Alexander, in uh, Tembisa, in uh, Atrechville, Mamilodi, Sebuking? Do we have offices where our people can easily walk in and tell us their problems? Or do we only exist in the suburbs of white people and do not find expression where our people are. These branches that we lead, that have elected us, are they real branches or are they bogus branches? And if they are bogus branches, 
Will these branches ever deliver victory of the EFF come 2024? Because if you launch Bogus branches and lie to the organization, you must know that you are setting up the organization for failure come 2024. Because the ANC here in Gauteng leads with 50.1%. The ANC was rejected here in Gauteng. And the ANC, the new leadership of the ANC in Gauteng has gone on a very aggressive campaign. They have now hired 3,000 safety officers, 6,000. They now want to hire another 6,000 of cleaners. Those are not employees. Those are the ground forces of the ANC in preparation of 2024. Because they know that they are leading with borrowed times. And the weak EFF which has declined votes here in Gauteng as demonstrated by Ipsos in the last national plenum will not shake the ANC come 2024. So we must, here and now, find a strategy within which we're going to remove the ANC completely or we're going to bring it below 40%. Because our people cannot continue with the pain called the ANC. And you must be the solution. I mean, I sit here and I still listen to reports that there are councillors in Ikurulin who don't go to council. And the deputy president tells me that there are two councillors in Ikurulin who don't go to council. They, they, they have been a problem. I say to him, why are you telling me that? Why do you still have them as councillors? Why can't you remove them and bring Mampur Mampur if he's not in the council? I always have solutions, you see. <laughs> I don't waste time. Why do you want to waste time on people who are wasting time on the organization and not invest enough time on people who love the organization, who work very hard for the organization? Because... We must maximize on every strong K that we have and feel very painful when we lose such a K that to the periphery. We must always bring them closer and empower them. We cannot coexist with laziness. We have said this for so many years. It's time to take action. Comrades, why would you go to a conference and elect a person who doesn't have metric? Why would you do that? We tell you every day for the past 10 years that you must go to school. Leaders do not go to school. I come to your conferences and address you that you must elect people who go to school. 10 years of existence you still have a leader of the EFF who doesn't have metric. Ten years into existence, you still have a leader of the EFF who doesn't have post metric qualification and being in council and being in legislature and being in parliament where educational opportunities are presented. You want to hate us. You want to project us as bad people. When we have given you so much opportunity, you didn't go to school at home, there was no man, fine. You didn't go to school, we had no opportunities, fine. But what is your explanation of the last 10 years since you have been in parliament and you haven't been to school? This message that people graduate in and out, uh, we make education fashionable, that message doesn't resonate with you. 
There are leaders here in Gauteng who have not been to school. How, how do you do that? I'm going to sponsor a motion in the next NPA that everyone who's going to lead the EFF must at least have metric. At least have metric. But on Monday, this coming Monday, I'm issuing out a letter directly from me to all those who have been in the legislature and parliament and councils to give an explanation why they've not gone to school. Maybe EFF is a problem. It's disturbing them. That's why they can't further their studies. We should release them to go and further their studies. And then maybe they will come back after they've studied. Why would you want to deploy someone into government, into MMC, into anything without metric, and then come here and tell us that the ANC deployment policy is a problem, and you come and do the same thing? Deploy metricless, unqualified people into the government of the EFF in the name of the EFF and come here and say to us, the reason there is no service delivery, the ANC deployment policy, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? People deploy, get deployed because their comrades won, because they can sing the loudest, because they've got proximity to certain people. This country, it is where it is today. It is where it is today because the ANC has deployed unqualified people. Why must I have a debate with the leadership of the EFF about that? Why should the leadership of the EFF say to me, when I say this person is he, he's a good comrade, we love this comrade, but he's not qualified. Why should the leadership say to me, no, wait, president, let's go and have, we'll have a caucus and come back to you. It, it's not a matter we should have a debate about. Let's give to our people the best quality we can. The best, we are not here to make friends. We are not here to be liked. You comrades want to hate us on things that are so simple, they are in your hands to correct. A highly qualified comrade was told to resign in Johannesburg Council to create a space for a treasurer. Correctly so. Look, we want this treasurer to come and be an MMC of health because she's a nurse. She will have some idea about this thing. But do you know what the EFF does? Goes to the highly qualified counselor and say to that counselor resign and leave the least qualified because the first target should have been what are the qualifications of these people <laughs> fine you can lead the EFF there we don't elect it's the branches that elect you. Fine, we may not interfere with that because we don't want to be called dictators. But when it comes to deployment, it's not branches. It's the leadership which must apply its mind. <laughs> highly qualified comrade. And the justification is that, no, you see this one is highly qualified. So it, it, we can deploy him somewhere. Agerikigua Turongongua is London. Agerikigua I'm in prison there in court. I'm listening half this side, half that. So when that court finishes, I come back home. And then I'm sitting alone. I'm like, no, 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 no. There is something wrong here. There's something wrong here. And I call, I say, my conscience will not allow. I have no problem at all, but my conscience refuses. I'm trying to accept this. I, I've not spoken to anyone. I'm trying to accept this. But my conscience refused. They say, why? Well, I say, this is what we're complaining about with regard to the ANC. And we come and do the same. And we do worse. 
we must forget about replacing the ANC if we're going to go on like that. Of friendship. Of leadership. <laughs> you don't have to be a counselor for you to be a leader. You can be a leader without being a counselor. You don't have to be a, an MMC for you to be a counselor. You can be an ordinary counselor without being an MMC. Because you ought to answer a question over again. What does my deployment do to the image of the EFF? Does it enhance the image of the EFF or will it damage the image of the EFF? If you love the EFF, you will say to the leadership of the EFF, thank you very much, but I think I still have got issues to sort out. I'm not ready. I will come back when I'm ready. And then go and sort yourself out. Sort yourself out. Once you've sorted yourself out, no one can stand on your way. Comrades, we have we, uh, sleepless nights. As we speak now, the SG of the EFF will be graduating again. The deputy president will be graduating again. I'm stuck with dissertation <laughs> of masters. When? Udopalaku yo mwala bailochi. Ufeleche bailochi. Eh? Le mets litres. Le life orientation. So let me tell you, by the end of this year, all the public representatives without metric should have written their metric and completed it. It's the easiest thing to do. It's the easiest thing to do. Go and improve yourself. Because we are not going to have a metricless counselor in 2024. And all of those who are metricless must go and ask the leadership if they are deployed. Or after the speech, I think I must say, go fix myself. I will come back. On your own. Don't wait for anyone to come to you. Because by doing that, you want to hate us. Do it yourself. To avoid hating people who are self-correct, who are correcting you. Go self-correct. I'm not here to build friendship with anyone. I'm here to build a solid organization that will be a solution to the problems of our people. And therefore, we cannot be problems to society. Today we are being asked, hey, Kenny Kunene is an MMC. Hey, the EFF, what, what? There is something that you guys forget. That Kenny Kunene and those PA organization of uh, ex-convicts, Mapantit, they were elected by the people. Baba Kheti. Kenny Kunene, before he becomes an MMC, he must be a counselor. Before he becomes a counselor, his party should have been elected. They are elected. Why do you want to blame it on us now? If it was our choice, but people want to come to us and say, hey, can you name this? They were elected by the people. It's not us who created that problem. It's the people who elected them. There's nothing we can do about it. And there's nothing we can do about the EFF not governing. There's no way we are going to govern, and we are going to govern with the best, and the best of the best. Reatena musho, vile harinya kutsi wa selor, zana ka rivez. Arisa raloga no. We are going to govern, and we are going to be the best. In health in Johannesburg, we are going to be the best. In public safety in Johannesburg, we are going to be the best. In MPEG in Johannesburg, we are going to be the best. In the speaker of Ikurlane, we are going to be the best. We are going to take five MMCs in Ikurlane, we are going to be the best. 
We are going to do everything in our power to take Mogali City as well and deploy the best of the best. So we are not playing about this thing called governance. But they will come to you and say the EFF is flip-floppers, right? The DA is not called flip-flopper. It is the DA that went into coalition with PA. And then today the DA made the U-turn. It's no longer with PA in the coalition. They are not called flip-floppers. But when we decide that we are no longer going to work with apartheid collaborators in a form of the IFP, they are flip-floppers. Because the flip-flopper concept is meant for black people and not for a white man. We will do the same thing as the DA does. They will not be called the same name you are called because they are white. So, comrades, we are preparing to take government here in Gauti. And that's why Kanani Kanan. What? Say I'm all healthy. Kanes. Kanes. Return I'm all. Ekuruleni. Return I'm law graduates. Because speak I get sonji severe gega me lawana. Yeah, legislative. Are you also maru vundulu? Are no diploy about? No, 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 no. We are deploying the best. We are preparing to take government. These are training grounds for the MEC of Health after 2024. When they say, why is she an MEC of Health? She's a nurse. She's a former MMC of a biggest city of Joburg. Today she's MEC. We are bringing you the best. Both politician and a professional, she understands both and cannot be misled. We should seek, we should seek amongst ourselves, try and find the best for our people because we take our people very serious. So, comrades, Gauteng cannot disappoint us. Remember that all eyes are now on you. MMCs do not meet people in restaurants. Do not meet people at night. Do not allow people to come to your houses. Let them make an appointment. And then you meet during the day in the office where there will be evidence of such meeting. You are going to be tempted a lot by those doomsayers who do not like us. They are going to come with all sorts of bribes to try and destroy you because by extension, they will destroy the EFF. So before you do anything, think of this organization of our people. Because our people are really relying on you. We want by Monday from this MMCs a hundred days program. What are they going to achieve in the next hundred days, which will have impact practically on the lives of our people. Do not forget, MMC of Health, that we want clinics open 24 7. It starts now, it's not going to be postponed. It must start now. Mashaba had already started it. We must continue with it as the EFF to make sure that we give our people quality services. We are in the public safety. That Hillbrook, 
must be restored to its former glory. We cannot allow a situation where uh, shacks are erected on the paving of a, a, a hillbrook. That is not land expropriation. That's anarchy. Land expropriation is not land damage. We can't have uh, public safety. No shacks on the paving of Hillbro. No hijacked buildings. We must go and reclaim our buildings in Gauti. And when we reclaim our buildings, we don't say we are reclaiming buildings from foreigners. We are reclaiming buildings from criminals. They are criminals. We don't care where they come from. Whether they are South Africans, whether they are Nigerians, where are the papers of this building? And we must make sure that every building occupied in Johannesburg is not a health hazard to our people. It has got proper water, it has got electricity, it has got safety certificate. Otherwise, we are removing those people from those buildings. No building is going to kill our people or bend down. Alexander. Enyaga di tima mollogo. Chao valimbe hits. Or when our shakes in Alex catch fire, we must respond with immediate effect. So public safety is very important. JMPD we must fight corruption. And JMPD must collect money through ticketing. Let him wallet ticket. They collect from these people who are breaking the law and take that money, reinvest it in the city and deliver to our people. Because, Chairperson, in Ikurleni, Libija and JMPD, Ikurleni, Lerge. EMP? EMPD. Do you know that EMPD doesn't collect money? Ikurleni, Metro Police do not collect money. They do not give people tickets. They are law unto themselves. When we go in there, we must go and fix that EMPD. Make sure that it is in order. Drunk and driving, no bribe. Because you must educate a traffic cop that when you take a bribe, you are actually allowing this person to go and kill people. You are equally a murderer. So we need a traffic cop of a special type who doesn't take bribe, who protects life. In every on-ramp and off-ramp of Joburg, Ikurleni, wherever we're going to be governing, there must be a car there. Any car that looks suspicious, JMPD must stop it. Any car that comes with an abnormal speed, we know it's a suspect of crime. They must chase after it. We must fight crime without thinking twice. That's a way to must turn it upside down and make sure that people do comply with the law. Through public safety and health, we must show these people what the EFF government is capable of doing. <laughs> Comrades, you don't have time. You have between now and May elections. You must have delivered. You must have followed up on the insourcing of those workers that we promised that they are going to be insourced. Every Saturday in the EFF, after all these plenums we have agreed, is Andre's Tatani cleanup campaign. Every Saturday, every branch, everywhere, we must clean our townships. Because cleanness is a reflection of self-love. Let's go and clean up to our people and make sure that the township looks better.
and make the communities to police each other so that no one engages in illegal dumping. That Tembisa, when we take over, must be an example of what the EFF government does when it takes over. So, comrades, if we all do what is right, we will not go into a coalition in 2024. We will govern on our own directly, given that mandate by our own people. <laughs> conditions here in Kaute must improve. And we're going to make sure that the conditions do improve for our people. You know, if you want to see this is a government property, you don't have to ask. You just look at it and uh, through dilapidating buildings and grass, you can see that uh, this is a government. No clinic of the EFF is going to look like that in Johannesburg. We must make sure they are well maintained, well cleaned, and we must make sure even the waiting areas of our people they are proper, and those chairs are in good condition. Anything that is broken must never be found in a clinic of the EFF. Because that is a sign of showing our people the love we have for them, the respect we have for them. So that comrade who was asked to resign, I really, really wish to thank him for listening to his organization without throwing his toys out of the court. He willingly said, if the organization wants this, I'm deployed by the organization. The organization will see where it can use me in the future. Let's do this. We never had a headache. We never went to from. I was never called to say, go and talk to that guy. Those who went to talk to him, in less than 30 minutes, there was agreement and things were processed. That is the type of a cadre we want in the EFF. <laughs> Not he, why? <laughs> I bought a bag. How am I going to pay it? You'll pay it with the pensions. <laughs> because I read somewhere in his newspaper that but while Lagadi Venemo Houting or were being removed, what's going to happen to the van? Let me tell you, and we are written about that. The ANC went to a conference, DD did not win. As a result, they are now preparing to sue in Paul Mashatili. Why? There has been political developments. There is political developments in the EFF, and you must be accommodative of that. You want to stay and stay forever. Enjoy the trust of the branches of the EFF. In that way, when you emerge and become the EFF leader, no one can remove you without reason in the legislature. We went to a conference. There is new leadership of the EFF, and it can't lead only in the EFF offices. It must lead everywhere where the EFF is found. That is their mandate. Therefore, they've got a duty to go and lead in the legislature. And we make no apology about that. Create a space for the leadership of the EFF. Because we don't want them to give us ex excuses tomorrow that we are unable to have an impact in the legislature because we are not there. The people who are there are not listening to us. They must lead in all front. When there are political developments, you must be accommodative to that unless you do not know politics and that you see the deployment in the legislature as an employment. And then you take us to the newspapers. And worse, you take us to the newspaper of my friend. <laughs> and you think I won't know who took us to the papers. You know, I had sympathy before you took us to the papers. After you took us to the papers, I was like, ah, then we were right. There's no leadership here. Leadership must know when 
its own organization makes a call, you must say, Dim law. Always readily available to serve the organization in all different forms. That's what leadership is about. So, I, I, I salute that comrades. Because I thought these comrades were going to have a headache. There was no headache at all. Because he understands that the organization has got a certain mission to achieve and that mission must be made possible. The elections are coming. You must make sure that the EFF chair must increase its votes. Because we don't want another acting chair in this province because we have a history of acting chairs. We, we, we hope you won't resign. So, we want increase, and not just increase, significant increase, impactful increase, an increase that will make the EFF not only take Haute, but take the whole of South Africa. We rely on you. I don't know if you have told your wife if you've got one. I've told mine, weekend, weekend, EFF. Non-stop. How's that very gay? Lema kukia tenda fru. Ebar tapelo mulugulugu. Oleba di raping. Nagi leba EFF. Nagi di raping. Every, if we want to increase our votes every weekend, we must be on the ground working hard to build this organization to win more votes for this organization to register more new voters for the EFF. Let me tell you what happened in Tef Europe through the student command. When we contested elections for the first time in Tef Europe, University of Limpopo, we won those elections. First time. But Sasko did not lose a single vote. Actually, Sasko got more than the votes they got the previous year. But we still won. You know how? The student command went to bring completely new voters on the voters' roll and made sure those voters vote. We have been getting 10% through other people's voters because those voters who are on that voters' roll are not registered by the EFF. We are going to register our own now to add on that voter. We must retain this number we have and bring completely high number, new number onto the voters roll. So, the question is going to be going forward in this year of massive political education and voter registration. How many new voters have you registered this week? New of our own the people who will know that I am on this voter's role because I was brought into this voter's role by the EFF. We are going to register our own. We are going to take our own to the polls on the voter's day. So, comrades, this year we educate politics, but we also register voters. As we do mass political education, we also do mass registration of new voters into the voters' role. That is our task. Our task is not to make friends. Our task is not to be liked by anyone. The, our task is to answer the question, how many new voters did I register this week? It's an individual responsibility. Comrades, I don't know where is that is now to give me a list of uh, those people, the councillors, how many buses, blah, 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 to FNB. Someone must give me that. So that when I live here, they don't say it's Dunga. I must tell them what they must do. So, 
We are going to FNB Stadium. We are going to fill up that stadium to a point where there must be an overflow. The whole 90,000 of that stadium must come from Khaute. And another 90,000 must come from outside Khaute. You can't host and expect people to come and fill up a stadium in your own. But that stadium will not be filled up by a person who's not on the voters' roll. Before they get into a bus, they must prove that they are registered to vote. Because we are being insulted here by fools that we fill up stadiums uh, with foreigners. So this time around, we are going to make sure everyone, and we don't want them to come with IDs. Those IDs are very important. They must remain at home. They know their ID numbers. They just give us the ID. You stand by the door and say, ID number. Then it's done. Registered. Come in. No one is going to be at FNB Stadium who is not a registered voter. So, all of us, I'm given a task to bring 20 buses. I must pay for them. I must also fill up those buses. We all are given buses. But it's unfair. Because Mbuisen is also given 20. Yet he's closer. They said 20 buses from where you come from. Umpuj. Now I must bring 20 <laughs> from Sishiu. <laughs> and then Mbuisen must bring 20 from Orange Farm. <laughs> they should have said 40 Mbuisen <laughs> and then 20 me so that we strike a balance. Because we are going to pay for those buses ourselves. And not from our money, not from our salaries. We are tasked to go and raise money to pay for those buses. Why? Leaders must have the capacity to raise funds on their own. Because a lot of leaders of the EFF can't even convene a decent RCT. A meeting of how many people over again? 21 people. Leaders can't organize such a decent meeting of 21 people. Now, when I came to Berry Krisani here in 1993, our own leaders organized buses for us there in the location where I come from. They never said there's a national which is going to give us buses. They organized buses for us to car to FNB. So, well, now you have never organized anything. That's why if every time we go and call branches, they complain about our councillors. Hey, councillor doesn't help us. Hey, councillor, this, hey, councillor. Let me do you a favor so that you do something in your lifetime. Or a branch you criticize about what have you done for us? Or he rejected the basic Alicia FNB. Skabala Tabala and Rasecha. FNB. So, members of parliament from Kauteng must organize 20 buses each, pay for those buses, and make sure that those buses are filled up with people by the end of May. Enough time. End of May. Twenty buses, members of parliament. Na lady, mbuiseni, vuyani, ntogozo, DP, mgini, Susan, umpile, ringo, 
Ah, le petit le pop. Ah, it's a valley knife, it's a yo yo. So many buses. You've got so many people in parliament because you deserve it. You give us so many votes. Motamai. Tsego is no longer in parliament. Tsego is in parliament. We haven't been to parliament for almost three years now. Members of legislature, EFF, Mukwebo, 10 buses. Eh? No, 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 no. Gauteng, I need Gauteng. Eh, Mukwebo, 15 buses. 15 buses. Fully paid and with a list that is verifiable by end of May. Philip Bigma. What are fell? 15 buses. What about the solar way, ya guy? All councillors of the EFF in Kauteng. All councillors of the EFF in Kauteng. Three buses each. Each. Three buses each. End of May, there are 10 councillors who didn't come here without apology. Hey, Baba, tell you. Three buses. List full. Councillors of Johannesburg. Johannesburg, five buses. Because I get must strike a balance. So, five buses, Johannesburg councillors by end of May. The SG had actually given me a list of how many buses we are going to get if we all do this. How many buses we are going to get just from public representatives alone. And how many people are going to come if they all do their task. More than 100,000 people with this bus arrangement alone. More than 100,000 people will come to that stadium. Brought by public representatives alone, of the EFF alone. The EFF is still going to make its own allocation of buses to the branches of the EFF and all of that. This has got nothing to do with an EFF allocation. We still are going to provide buses of the EFF. But these are from public representatives end of May. So, please start now. It's going to be important that you start with immediate effect so that you don't hate people when May comes. Because you are given a task. You don't perform it. When we take you on, you hate us for that. Comrades, the situation in South Africa is worse than what we can imagine. Things are bad to the core. The electricity is not going to be accessible to our people, not in the nearest future with the ANC in government. Leave this nonsensical rhetoric that in, by the end of the year there will be electricity. It's not true. The president told us in a meeting with him that if anything, we must look for two years. And even that two years, they are not confirming it. So we are going to stay in darkness for the longest of time. Only the elite and the few who can afford will be able to put inverters, solars, batteries, and generators. The rest of us are going to be in darkness for the next five years. If the ANC remains in power in 2024, the hospitals have collapsed. Our grandmothers who are extremely poor no longer agree to go to the hospital. When you say you are taking her to a hospital, she says, you are taking me there to die. Even the most illiterate know that there are no hospitals in South Africa. And when you are lucky to arrive in that building, there is no medication in that building. 
not even panado, to numb the pain. The schools have collapsed. As we speak today, a child was stabbed to death because our schools have become war zones. Teachers are sleeping with kids. So many children have become pregnant. Teenage pregnancy has gone high. There is no water in Tswani. There is no diesel for the buses of Tswani. And that is happening under the DA government. If it was an EFF government, me and you will not be sleeping. All the clever blacks will be shouting all the insults in the book against the EFF because it's a black government. But because that is a white man's government, they don't say anything. There's no water in Tswani. There's no water here in Johannesburg. If you go to Sidibeng, all the townships look like dumping areas with rubbish all over that is passed by councillors every day on their way to council and back home. It's not like they don't see it. The potholes are the order of the day. There was a big rain yesterday and two days ago in Pulukwan. There is a tar road that is washed away by the rain. A new tar road, not an apartheid tar road. Motomwa is just nepari. It's literally. That's how messed up the situation is in our country. Women are killed on a daily basis. The levels of crime are so high, so much that we have normalized it. It actually becomes a shock if you go a day without hearing that someone has died, killed. It's a shock. It's a shock that you can go for a day without hearing that a woman has been stabbed to death. Criminals do as they wish. The person who killed the daughter of our former SG was on parole, arrested for absconding, and then given a bail again, and then become on a, a second parole. Killed the girlfriend, killed the sister of the girlfriend, then killed Hillary. Because they are not scared of anything. Nothing will happen to them. There is no longer authority in South Africa. The president is presiding over a collapsed, failed state. There is no longer government. We can't fold our arms and do nothing about it. We have to stand up because this is a clarion call that our people are making. We fought in, in parliament. We fought in the courts. The courts are on their side. Parliament is on their side. A president steals money, stuff money in his couches. Judges say this guy has got a case to answer. Politicians use their majority to protect a criminal. A money launderer, a woman abuser, who went to take a domestic worker, a female, beat up at his farm. We must have such a person as a president. So we cannot stand and do nothing about it. We have to take action. So the picket lines are calling. Whether they like it or not, on the 20th of March, South Africa will come to a standstill. We require nobody's permission to occupy the streets of South Africa to demand the release of the president and to demand that we switch on South Africa. The 20th of March, nothing must move except emergency services. They can all say the nonsense they want to say 
We are not hearing them. We are not listening to them. We are listening to the cries of our people. Our people are saying, Sabela Oyabizo, the EFF is being called upon from Musina to Cape Town, from uh, Great R to PhD. No school on that day. No work on that day. No factory must be opened on that day. All of us, when we move out of here on Monday, each and every factory, each and every school, each and every workplace must receive a letter on time. Make plans. There is no work on the 20th of March. No truck must move. Especially the trucks that are moving our minerals to Richards Bay. All of them must be packed. No train must be moved. So any branch that has got a railway that goes to Richards Bay, you should be making plans now how the train is going to be stopped if they're forced to take the train to Richards Bay. Natal must be ready to stop Richard's Bay. Nothing moves on the 20th and we are not going to start at 8 o'clock. We are going to start from 3 a.m. in the morning to stop everything so that when these cowards wake up in the morning, they should realize that indeed they can't move. Let's show the power of the working class on the 20th of March, let's show capital who we are. We can no longer be dictated to by capital in South Africa. They must take their puppet and go with him if they want to go with him. We want our ESCOM back. And there is no ESCOM that is going to be privatized. We are not going to allow these people to close our coal power stations our power relies on coal. We are not refusing transition. But for now, as we transit, we need that coal. And no one must close our coal power stations without our permission. Only the EFF can stop them. Only the EFF can save the economy of South Africa, the source of energy of South Africa, only the EFF can save the jobs of the people of Mpumalanga because when you close the coal mines, all of those Mpumalanga people are going to be unemployed to adding into the big problem we have. Only in South Africa do you get the youth being 60% unemployed and the same youth saying we can't join the, the shutdown on the 20th. Yet 60% of the youth, revolution is an activity of the youth. The youth of South Africa, led by the EFF Student Command, must show these people what is meant by radical youth. Because we have abandoned radicalism in South Africa, especially amongst young people. Every president must be very scared that 60% of the youth are unemployed in South Africa. They've surrendered to alcohol and drug abuse because there's nothing more to do. When they go to school, they want money. When they try to work, there's no work. When they go and try to play sport, there are no sporting facilities. People say Sundowns is performing better and all of that. You know, when you exist amongst the West, even if you are the worst, you become the best. Because in South Africa, African soccer, because they, they don't see anything. Wow. Why? Talent can only be an earth at an early age so that it can be nurtured and it becomes the best. No sports, no work, no school. The youth are only left in the hands of the drug dealers. 
So we have a responsibility to rescue the youth of South Africa by demanding a government that will look after the youth of South Africa. We are not doing this for ourselves. We are doing this for generations to come. This government has become so comfortable. That's why they can just call a press conference and say stage six. And then as part of a favor share movement, maybe stage two. And then we, we normalize that. We accept that. We are not going to allow South Africa to become Lagos. Where generators are screaming loud every corner of the street. We are going to rescue this country. It must not become another failed state. So where to? Stop Johannesburg. Alexander, stop Santin. You must, all, all of these cities, Rambeck, you must know which area is going to take care of which area. Nothing must move, must come to a standstill. This scouting must know what the EFF is made of. I hear noise. Mbalula calling us names that were anarchists. You know, to be called names by an illiterate is a painful thing. He must first go to school before he call us names first. Secretary General who can write a letter. So, we must show them that even this new ANC that they say it is our match is nothing. Mbalula is nothing. He won't do anything. If anything, he will be begging us that please, comrades, let, let's try to do it in a responsible manner. He can say the nonsense he says there on TV. He will never stop the EFF. No one can stop the EFF. Even that's a way to, no one can stop the EFF. That's why all of them are now talking. If we were nothing and when not anything to be taken serious, why are they all now out of their cocoon and speaking? It is because the leader of society has spoken. That's why they are all now speaking. Because there is only one leader of society. Only when the EFF speaks, the country shakes. They are all clownishing. I listen to them, all of them. When they speak, we don't shake. We will never fight with the taxi industry. Taxi industry is working class. We are going to work with them. We are going to meet them. They are readily available to be met, to be engaged, so that they can be a source of support on the 20th of March. Anyone who wants to drive a wedge between us and the taxi associations will never win because amongst us, we've got the taxi drivers. Amongst us, we've got the taxi owners. We exist everywhere as the EFF. The bus is John R. Sabulela. But we do stop. Nothing must move. We are not negotiating with those ones. So, comrades, your immediate task is to stop South Africa on the 20th of March. That is your immediate task. You must deliver it. And Pretoria, Chani, you are wise. Because that is why the mother of everything must happen. If we fail everywhere, we can't fail at, 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 at the capital city. And we are not going to the lawn of Pretoria. We are going to the entrance of the union building where the president stays and we are going to try to enter that place and remove him from union building because union building belongs to us. We are not doing anything usual. Rinaldi loni morina, we are not going union building loans. We are not going there. We are going the other way. We are looking for the crook with the big nose this side. We want to remove him from our house because 
Matabandlovu and Union Building belong to the people of South Africa and must only be occupied by leadership that is ethical and respect its oath of office. Mara before let's all let them move. Kadi twenty, Renaro Taganale na kuwa parliamenti. Do charana. Kadi nine February. We are going to show him what we are made of there in Parliament. We will never be addressed by a constitutional delinquent. We will never be addressed by a criminal. We will never be addressed by a money launderer. The courts can protect him anyhow. But we will face him in Parliament. And there is no court. We will be there and we are going to take him head on. And that is our relationship with him from now onwards. Everywhere where he goes, if you hear, mobilize the people to go and teach him a lesson. He must never find peace in South Africa for having violated his oath of office and violated our constitution. We have no respect for constitutional delinquents. We have dealt with one before. And they thought they were more powerful than this one. We cannot be threatened by an apartheid collaborator. By a man with no struggle credentials. By a man who has been adopted by white families. And that's where he got his accent from. Never will we be intimidated by a, someone who was deployed to destroy the liberation movement. That is his history. He can't dispute it. So, if they allow him to buy them with money, he will never buy us with money. The EFF is not for sale. The EFF belongs to the rural township masses of our people. The EFF belongs to the poorest of the poor. The EFF belongs to the Africans and not to a pocket of an individual. Thank you.